going to face the facts, another virtual episode here for all of you to join in and watch. We have uh, Phil Healy here in the house. We have Tom Smith also joining us today. And of course, you better know who I am. Uh, I am Nick Face. It's nice to see you all here once again. On today's program, we are going to be talking about um, a couple different things that result with the Bruins offseason. There's some things that we need to discuss on that end. If the Patriots are going to play this week, I don't know day by day with that. Um, I want to talk about the playoffs for baseball here a bit. And I could give a hill of beans about the Miami, uh, excuse me, the, oh, the Lakers winning the, uh, uh, the basketball championship, but we'll talk a little bit about that too and ask people's opinions on maybe LeBron James's legacy and all that baloney and nonsense. So <laughs> I, I do want to start though first with uh, the Patriots because we do have um, some things that we need to talk about regarding a potential game that was supposed to be played uh, th this past week uh, was canceled because we had Cam Newton with the virus. We have Gilmore with the virus and other players with the virus and all. Um, so basically it was like a bye week, uh, Phil, and it just turned into a whole bit of unknown on where the Patriots are going to even be playing another football game. So my question first here is, are we playing on Sunday? <laughs> uh, sure. <I> <laughs> we'll see. Same. I mean, day by day, right? Or hour day by day. hour. Um, it looks like Cam Newton and Gilmore are back from being out um, from the COVID diagnosis. So it looks like they are healthy enough to return, which I am uh, very pleased about. I think that it was um, – it was very difficult to have to watch that football game without Cam Newton as your quarterback. It was very difficult. So we had to deal with Brian Hoyer and Stidham um, in that game against Kansas City. I think if you put Cam Newton into that Kansas City game, it would have been a whole different football game. That's just my overall thoughts on that. Um, so looking ahead, we play the Denver Broncos. That will be Sunday afternoon, potentially again, 1 o'clock. Oh, so they didn't even – are they just pushing everything back? Uh, just week, basically, well, but they they gave the Patriots the bye week from this yeah, past this was week. The now the Patriots will continue yeah. to play, God willing, again. Uh, well, did Denver have a bye week this week scheduled? or? Uh, Denver had a bye week, I think, the past week or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. So, so it right. matched up okay where they could just take it the week prior – and yeah. just play the next game. So uh, it ended up working out okay on that. Weird. I guess they were fortunate, yeah. Expectations here. The Patriots are now sitting at three and two. Uh, oh, Buffalo two and two. Did right? lose, uh, two no, we're two oh, and two. And two and two, because we we're haven't, two yeah. Two? Yeah, because no, we haven't. No, no, no I think it's two and two, because two we two haven't two. played the fifth game. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right, so we have yeah, a loss against Kansas City. We have a loss against Seattle. We have a win against Miami. And we have a win against the Raiders. The, the Raiders so two yeah. and two. Okay. Maybe I'm jumping ahead. Three, three and two. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think, I think they could beat Denver. I don't know. They better beat I mean, Denver. They we, better. If we, have, if we have Cam, I think we're all set. And Gilmore, yeah. you know, or I think we're good. Even if the poor Thursday game, night, I just want to say before we start talking about the Denver game, Thursday night we saw the Tennessee Titans absolutely wallop the Buffalo Bills. So that was a nice sign. So the Tuesday Bills night. Their, spot, their first That was Tuesday night? That was that Tuesday, was, night, oh, not Tuesday Thursday. night, I <laughs> yeah. well, I, Who can follow anything I, I now? Don't. I mean, it is what it is. A Tuesday is a Thursday. Yeah. We didn't even have a Saturday. Thursday game, you know? Oh, yeah. The Tennessee looked very impressive. I was very much impressed with what I saw from them. Um, I still think Buffalo is a very good football team, but you saw – Quite quite a demolishing from the Titans on, on the Bills. So the Bills, I think they go to four and one now. Yep. So they're still atop the division, but it helps the Patriots because now if the Patriots get the win, it's they're going to be fighting neck and neck. And we still haven't played Buffalo yet. So no, you still got two games against yeah. them. So yeah, it's a good equalizer. So what are we expecting here on the Denver game? Are we expecting a win? What? Yep. What's, what's the takeaway here? <laughs> yeah. okay. Yep. No, I think I, I think it's going to be a fairly easy game. It all depends on how uh, how Cam's feeling. Really, this all really depends on. Do we think that there's going to be any sort of rust, or do you think he's just going to pick up where he left off and do what he's done the past few games that he's played? 
I think um, I think he's back off the list soon enough where he's going to be able to, you know, work off that rust if there is any. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he was, you know, made, probably doing a little bit of something, some kind of practice, even though, he, you know, he was sick. But who knows? Who knows something. how he was? We don't even know how he was feeling when he was, you know, on the on the list anyway. So. No, we really don't. We'll probably hear more details about what he went through the next few days as interviews lead up to the game. And then of course, post game, I'm sure someone's going to ask, did you have any, any sort of lingering effects of what this virus did to you and all that jazz? So I think we'll be educated and learn more about everything that goes on on that end. Has he been interviewed well during all no. this? Like even no, like by phone? No? I think they've kept his distance. So he's been away. It's probably that. for the best, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I expect to win. I am. Um, I'm in the 30-ish range, maybe like 34, 14, 17, something. I mean, like that's that. what we—that's what we expected for KC. Yeah, the other so way. I—I yeah. I didn't think the Patriots are going to win against Kansas City. I did. Well, it means the other way, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but I'm saying we—we we, like you know, Kansas was going to. We, the three of us, expected a high, uh, a high or a decently high-scoring game. You know, like a 20, 30 kind of game. We'll see. And maybe, like you know, maybe they just—they do what they can to win. I mean, they change every week. That's I mean, we could blow them out of the water. Who knows? Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't. You really, it's such an unknown this whole year. I mean, everything you got to take you. There's just zero expectation. If something surprises me, great. Like I, I don't know. You can't. Yeah, really got to take every game with the grain of unexpected. It's a very and couple that with the weird, you know, hijinks of the NFL and every other team. It's just kind of like, oh man, where's the season going to go? And it's right. kind of the thing with like, oh, it, under any other normal circumstance like we'd be able to kind of sit back and watch it happen but now it's kind of like in this jungle gym of of like crazy like oh, what's happening you know it's just like all this all this crazy crap is happening around you yep. vis-a-vis and who knows about uh if tennessee will get fined i don't know if they will i know we talked about it briefly last time yeah with Other the whole teams. um masks and oh masks but also having a, like a off um off grounds uh training or workout Right. Yeah, out. that's what they were doing. That's what I heard. I, I know that Tannehill was leading some sort of that's a workout right. of some sorts. And well, there's there's a rumor going around that Gilmore and uh, Newton had an off ground like dinner party or something. Oh man. <laughs> led from there. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's those are those are things that can happen yeah. when you don't follow the guidelines per se of your particular sports. Um, yeah, you know, from the top, from the sports. But, yeah, you know it, it. It is what it is. I, I, you can't really knock them. I mean, they're just going to get in like a dinner of some sort. They're mean, trying to live their lives, but I mean, you know, they have to. Life. But they have to understand, you know, what you know the ramifications of everything. Well, this is also what the NFL um, gets for not going into a bubble setting. So you know, the NFL gets what they pay for. The yeah. NFL looks atrocious right now. I will just tell you that. Yeah, like logistically, that's a whole big thing. And I'm trying to figure out how they think they're going to do it. And the worst you know part I mean? to make them look as bad as what are you doing, Tom? <laughs> he's trying I'm to sorry. find. He's trying to find his chi for this interview. No, what would you think they'll go into a bubble for the playoffs? Um, do you think the for the playoffs thing, they'll have a bubble? Well, they have to. I mean, yeah. Well, no. I, yeah. I was going to say that the NFL. Not being prepared is disgraceful because they had the longest time to get everything ready while this whole thing was going on. You know, baseball had to take their time because that was right smack dab in their spring training. Yeah. Same goes for, you know, hockey had it right. I don't think hockey had one single case of anything. No, you know, the NBA, didn't they really didn't. No, the NBA didn't. The only thing that happened was some idiot on the Rockets who was actually playing pretty well in the second round brought in a girl into a bubble. It almost seems like a like a boarding school, like hygiene, you know, like crazy. Like I brought a chicken to the room, but he got thrown out, and they actually were eliminated like a day or two later. But I think that was the only instance that we know of. Who knows? What yeah, all right we now. know of. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I do want to say on the rest well. of um, the NFL, I know Tampa has a big game this upcoming week, or bounce back game, particularly. It's going to be against Aaron Rodgers and uh-huh. the Packers. I actually am picking the Packers in this game. Because yeah, who did they lose? Did, did Tampa win or they lost? Yeah, well, no, Tampa they had lost. an atrocious yeah, they game lost. last. That was against Chicago, um, wasn't it? Yeah, the Bears. That oh, was the yeah, Thursday night right. football game last week. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, that's that was right. when Brady put up the four fingers. Like, that's four, right. Four, 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 four. Did we even talk about? We didn't. We didn't talk about that, did we? 
No, because we filmed no, before because that. That was that we did the That's Thursday. That's right. We did the Thursday. Uh, well, I remember we watching that. Talk about that. That was like so a Bill Brady, Parcells moment. Brady was super unprepared in that game, but I yeah. can't knock him on this end. I have to knock the entire Tampa organization. So starting from the top with Bruce Arians as their coach, they are the most undisciplined football team I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, you have one. You have one of the most uh, undisciplined players on your team. There, you have uh, Indomik and Sue. Oh, no, sure. Sue. I think Mike Evans is just a loose cannon. I yeah. really do. He has all the talent in the world, but that guy has got to put his attitude out of, out of the play. My God. I mean, I'll blame Brady a bit, especially if he didn't think it was fourth down. I don't think I've ever seen Brady scream as loud as I did through all those <laughs> bad receivers we've had on the Patriots and all that. Yeah. He absolutely torched that offensive line on one of those series that they had. It was like four, fourth down and 40 yards or something. 10-yard penalty for holding. Another oh, wow. penalty yeah. on the line for I don't know if I saw that whatever it could be, offsides. Yeah. Just inexplicable crap. I mean, they are – this team they will get not least... go anywhere unless they figure out they're 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 disciplined and, and they, they, stay they get focused. at least like five it penalties. It starts from the game. top. It starts from the top with Aaron's. I he is a he is or not Evans, a very yeah. good football coach. I'm sorry. He's just oh Aaron's yeah yeah yeah. He's not. He's always been overrated. He's not a winner. He's he's a he's a he's a poor man's Andy Reid. <laughs> it's a that's a sick insult. It is. But fairly... Sometimes you just got to go below the belt sometimes. When it's it's accurate, though. It's definitely so accurate. He's kind a poor of. man's Andy Reid, and Andy Reid is no no prize turkey. He's just not. I mean, he's done he's done well enough, and he did – I mean, he has won one with um, – I mean, one of the best quarterbacks in the league in probably the last couple of years, but I don't know. Is man. he, though, Phil? Is yeah, he, I think Mahomes is Mahomes one of the best? Yes, of course he is. Of course he is. Shut up. Of course he is. Like, we don't have to like it. But I mean, and I don't think, I but don't I, I will, no, I will grant you this. I think last week's shows, the last two weeks have shown that whether or not it's too early, maybe just being like, oh, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, early in the season. But the last two weeks, he hasn't been really that good. Like he's had parts where he's like, oh, it's pretty good. Even against the Pats, like, right. They kind of got out of that. Uh, they were lucky to get out of it. But against the Raiders, and, you know, they had a shot too. They had a shot to, um, to get back in when they were down by like, um, 14 they had a shot uh Kansas City I'll give him he does talent I'll give him that I'm not going to take that away from him yeah. but the arrogance the cockiness the I that, that stuff but Brady had I mean, that same it's because, arrogance and cockiness but Brady's earned that he's got six Super Bowls that guy sure, but, but before he, he did it before he did it because of Mahomes on why they won that last Super Bowl it had nothing yeah, to do no, with Yeah, no. Oh, no. It had a bit to do with Mahomes. Are you kidding me? I don't I think mean, so. I, I really also, don't. Well, I don't know about that. I don't I mean, know. I think that's weird. But I think I, – I think that, yeah, he got them there. But when it came to that Super Bowl – see, yeah. I'm not ready to hear oh, the he got... to the kingdom and say, hey, you are the face of the NFL. You are the next best I don't face. know if he's the fi- – I mean, is no there way. a true face of the NFL, though? I would argue that there isn't. I think I think he's I think he's being made out to be I think he's being made out to be I think he is I think they want him to be the next Brady. Sure, I don't even think Brady was the face of the NFL to be honest. No, I don't either. I I think to a degree. I mean, you always have superstars, and I think like that was the thing with the Pats that we kind of held dear because it was something weird we had with uh, the working classy. That's just my perspective from afar. Again, again, Phil, I have no problem with your point. I'm just saying. (laughs) Oh, I'm taking numbers. uh, uh, (laughs) uh, No, no, but I, I, but I also think it's a weird. I think it's sometimes where like we construct things of like us and the other, and I know that has a bit well, of the us know. against them kind of mentality. Yeah, of course. And, and I'm not trying to put that mentality on. I'm just trying to say I've so, it's so also 20 huge. years of Tom Brady as our quarterback, and yeah. the NFL just magically wants to say, "Oh, look at our glory boy, Phil, uh, Patrick Mahomes." Now we'll put my he, name in he there. Is, he is. He is. He is worth all the money in the land. Let's back up the freaking Brinks truck for this. This sure. guy, but I mean that that aside, that that's that's, that's, just, that's it's the just NFL. insanity. It's insanity to sure, me. Sure, sure. Somebody but five hundred million dollars. Granted, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I need to see another championship. To you need to, you need to see another three or four legacy. championships from him. I get it. Right, that's what I need. Twenty to see. championships. Because I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to hold that standard high when it comes to saying, okay. 
Well, if you're going to be this this number yeah. one, you know, NFL guy, and you're going to be the face of the league, and everyone wants to say he's the best, and I expect the best. And what I have seen from Mahomes is absolutely not the best, in my opinion. In in overall, or just these past couple of weeks? I mean, these past couple of weeks, definitely. But even back from the Super Bowl, I mean, was I angry that the Patriots weren't there? Probably, and I had a bias <laughs> towards me. I'm not going to say I didn't. No, yeah, all right. But he. But didn't if you even... beat Tom Brady, if you beat Brady, I mean, granted, he had a horrible year, Brady, for the most part last year. I'm going to expect mm. somebody to win that MVP and to you know to to, to really be that stud. Well, I think he. Is. I think you're downplaying. He. I mean, he was. His numbers showed, and he was there. I mean, he, the way he performed, like. I mean, the way they took down the Titans and they went, uh, they took down Houston, they were down, what was it, like 24 to three or something? Right. Like in the divisional round. And then they stormed back from that. And they stormed back. Truthfully, from I'll even tell you this. Truthfully, I actually like Lamar Jackson a little bit more than uh, Patrick Mahomes. I like Lamar I Jackson. I, but I would, I would say you're more apt or you're more uh, correct to put that he hasn't done anything label on him. Because the second year in a row, that guy kind of vomited on his shirt a little bit. Or yeah, maybe the team. He did. I would say. Uh, and Jimmy G. Like, I think Jimmy G. I love Jimmy G. But I think, you know, in that Super Bowl. There's hit, a guy that's under a lot of uh, – th there's some serious well, yeah. issues going on with that right now. Yeah. There's a guy that San Francisco just may not pick up his option for next year. That's and so just may weird. release him and just say, go ahead. You're going to be a free agent. Go ahead. We're not going to guarantee goes? you that money. Where do you think I he goes? I think that might happen. Do you think we pick him back up, or do you think it's just going to – I believe in Cam Newton. I believe in Newton. So long as yeah. he's healthy, I believe in Newton. And I, and I I'm with you, actually. hope that the Patriots – it's amazing that I would even say something. <laughs> well, I think – I've never been a Cam Newton guy, but clearly yeah. he is bought into the system. Mm -hmm. Newton enjoys playing here. I think that he's showing everybody that he's still healthy and he's going to be a dominant quarterback and everything. I like what I see. Well, here's, here's, my here's my question. Here's my question. Um, I know we were talking about Mike Evans and we kind of got off track on that, but, um, you know, I'll take it back to that eventually because I have another point on him, but uh, with Jimmy G, do you think that he would come back here and be a backup quarterback? No. Just to be here? No. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't, he, if no. he, he can't come, I mean, I'm sure he'll have plenty of suitors because there are enough teams in the NFL, like maybe even, Oh God, maybe Washington is the place for him because who's I quarterbacking? Think I can see somebody like the Jets. Like I, I'm, I'm. Oh pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're almost done yeah. with uh, Darnold. Oh my God, I, yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting about that team. I mean, look at the Jets. They released Le'Veon Bell. What, they what released Le'Veon Bell too. They did? Yes, yeah. they did. Oh my God, they're what? attractive. The Patriots almost picked them up. Who did? The Pats. The, the Pats. That's yeah, so they were, crazy. They were, they were thinking about. They were considering picking him up, and he, uh, but he signed with. Ended up signing with. Um, if it's back with Pittsburgh, I think that's the funniest thing. No, I don't think it was yeah. Pittsburgh. I forget where it's One of the signed. trash heap teams in the league. Well, probably. which Pittsburgh – Pittsburgh is also a sneaky team right now, too, because aren't they 4-0 or, like, 4-1? Something like that, yeah. yeah I mean, really Pittsburgh, is always, Pittsburgh is always there, though. I mean, well, that's, yeah, that's but – That's always – I mean, last year they weren't too hot, though. So, I mean, I mean but I'm with until, you. They are until Roethlisberger there. retires, Pittsburgh is going to be a given. They're always going to be there. Yeah. Uh, to your point, though, Tom, back to the, the Garoppolo thing, I don't think that he'd settle for a backup. I personally don't think that it's in his best interest to do that. I think he's well, going to go, agree, even, if it's also... a, even if it's the Jets or if it's uh, uh, just the, the Giants for all I know, who knows, something like that. He'd go to that versus being a backup. I don't know why it's not working right now in San Francisco. Maybe Garoppolo was overvalued. He could have been. Well, I think I think, I think so, I but I also I also think he could have used more time as backup. To be honest, I, I think, and I, the only reason why I brought it up is because how many more time, how many more chances are we going to give Brian Hoyer? <laughs> you know. Well, I do think to add on to your point on the whole backup situation, I personally think the Patriots are okay if Cam Newton is their lead quarterback with a Stidham back up there. Because it's he's going to gain experience with more reps and time through practice and all, and get you know a little bit more comfortable with how the NFL and everything works. Remember, this is only a second year in the NFL, right? So that takes time to build up that resume in a way. I mean, look at look at a guy like uh, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he was Brett Favre's backup for years, and it took him three, four, maybe even five years to finally 
they handed, yeah. handed that job over to him. So, you know, it takes time. Hoyer is just, he's a ball boy. That's all he is. He's a ball boy. He's going to end up with Brady again and hold his balls and, you know, do his thing. That's what's going to happen. I mean, if he can do that correctly. It's a subject, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, you can't even handle was... a ball, no. <laughs> no. Uh, but I, do th- I actually do think if he were to play against Denver on Sunday, they'd win. What did you I say? I think if Porter right. were to play on um, Sunday, they would win. Unbelievable. Well, I think they win. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think they would, but I don't. Oh, I don't man. think you need. But I don't think you need the Choking score. Choking on my words at the no, of course. Denver, no, no, but in all seriousness, yeah, Denver, Denver isn't even. That, Denver isn't that garbage. I mean, no. On, well, I mean, do you, some but do you think? Well, I mean, look at how the Pats handled uh, the Kansas City offense. But that's Kansas City. Like that's. But that's but you know, the top teams in the league, they're not going to care about Denver. They're not going to. They're not going to. They're not going to bring the same intensity. They're going to bring right against. I know. I I think that's kind of a horse manure a little bit. I think it's a little PS. PSB. No, I'm not PSB. saying I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that they're not gonna. You know, try try their. I know give it their all. I know but what like, you mean. They're not gonna give as much as they did against Kansas City as they would against a team like Denver. I think they might not be as hyped, sure, but they're gonna go to work the same way they go to work. I mean, isn't that the telltale sign of a Belichick team? Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 bear- do your job, Phil. All right, just do your job. <laughs> Just shut up and listen. Just no, shut um, up, talk basketball, and that's it. <laughs> I thought part of their job yes, was to I didn't skip weeks. That's what I thought it was. Um, no, but I think – no, I and I'm being – and I'm not trying to – I think – I don't think he's a good quarterback, but I think it's one of those things, if he actually managed the game and didn't screw up as much, and if they actually – the defense held, I think it would they would win, whether it would be a blowout or an out. Uh, I don't think it would be a blowout, but I think they'd be able to get by It'd be a weird exercise of futility. I mean, you almost won that game against Kansas City with Hoyer screwing up. Yeah, despite his seven. So, I mean, Phil, it's not a valid – I mean, yeah, your defense could end up winning that game with somebody. That's a testament to how good your, you know, your coaching, your defense, and everything can be. And the program. I just hope it doesn't get to that situation. No, I mean, uh, likewise. Again, I don't want to ever have to see that debacle ever again in my life. That, that would be wonderful if I never But I also think Tom is right in, in a sense, too, that, I mean, there's a, you know, you're hyped up for Kansas City, you know, like a Monday night game or like a Sunday night. It's like, oh, we're going against Denver. Crickets, crickets, you know, <laughs> like nothing. Who gives a... <laughs> you know, well, who's their quarterback, too, when it's at home, right? Who's their quarterback now in Denver? It's like some rookie, right? Some no name kid that, that no one yeah. cares about. <laughs> well, well, that's – yeah. I mean, maybe that's Jimmy G's new place of employment. I'm going to see John Elway step back onto the field. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to just fall apart. Well, actually, it would be fun if someone just tagged on me, just blew up like, you know, mm-hmm. us. I mean, yeah. not to say he'd lose a life would be great, but it would be – Cosmically hilarious. But yeah. So the big game, I still think the biggest game this week is is still looking at Tampa. Tampa and, and the Packers. Okay. I'm still going with I'm gonna go with the, the Packers. Pack. I know Rogers somehow sometimes just kind of self-destructs on the big stage sometimes. <laughs> you think? But sometimes. Right. I mean, he only has one Super Bowl, if I'm, That's if I'm true. correct on that. And he so, got cheated out of a, a, a second trip. This, yeah. We talked about this on the last show, and I and yeah. I said that. So far, I've seen a much more motivated, and I know one of you brought up to the point that, oh, they're the Packers. I think Tom said it. It's yeah. a typical Rodgers team. You know, they get to this, they, they build you up, and then they knock you down at the mm-hmm. very end. But there could be a different situation yeah. scenario here. I just, I, I personally think that Tampa's going to lose again this upcoming week, and people in Tampa are going to hit the roof and start asking for errands to get fired and, why did we bring in Brady? All yeah. these, all this speculation is going to start going again. So, I still, a little bit inside of me says, I kind of enjoy it when Brady loses. I, I don't know. I just kind of do. Well, it's more fun now because bad. he's not here. <laughs> yeah. It kind of feels like, oh, how can I do that? But then again, when you think about the situation and all, it's that he's not on the Patriots anymore. We don't want him to win. If you're well, a Patriots fan, you want the Patriots to win. Sure. I mean, you can have both, too, as it, you know, as both teams move side by side. I think it's fun to – I mean, let's say I don't have other teams I enjoy rooting for. I enjoy rooting for the Chargers yep. sometimes because I uh, – sometimes I like that. Um, but, yeah, no, I think rooting for Tampa is kind of fun. I mean, it's kind of a weird – but it is also cool to see the train wreck and to see, it like, he, he, <laughs> just how, like, like – I thoroughly enjoyed that last Thursday bit. night seeing oh four. And then Brady's like, oh, it was, and that's he had, it. The game's over. Oh, and he had I, someone in the flat. Unbelievable. 
Do you, do you remember that play? He had someone in the flat too. He could have yeah, got did. that, could have got that, those yards. He could have got yep. that first down. But there's your coaching difference. If mm -hmm. Belichick was in that position with the other staff too, I don't think that ever would have happened. Do you think that's part Brady? I mean, that has to be lay on Brady a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, of course it is. I mean, he's your leader. He's your, yeah. he's your, he's your guy out there. But for some strange reason, there's too much of a laid back country club atmosphere with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it's from Aaron's I'm telling you right now, like one of the things that Brady kept preaching and saying with Gronk when they decided to go there was, Oh, Aaron's is so laid back. We actually have fun playing football. Well, shouldn't your fun be winning championships? I mean, that's what you did here with the Patriots. Would you but rather go it, play, you know, is, is sorry it, if I have to say this, would you rather play grab ass? with the rest of the players on your team or do you want to win well, championships? Is, isn't All right, that I'm going to win championships. Isn't that, isn't that the reason why he wanted to keep playing football was because he enjoyed playing it? Isn't that I, what he, he, enjoyed isn't the that what he it, preached yeah. here for 20 years? Right. Oh, yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy playing football. It's I don't want to get yelled at anymore. Mommy, don't let him yell at me. He's a mean man. Man, what a takedown. All it took was a couple months – we <laughs> checked the watch. A couple months for us to really get on his ass. Nick, Nick, Nick took Tom Brady's pedestal, which could you? Boom. I mean, Blam. yeah, sure. I mean, but the, yeah, this is he got what he, you know, he got what he wanted. He gets what just, he gets yeah. what he wants. Yeah, exact. That's exactly right, Phil. You get what you pay for, and they, basically, Brady, no other team really in the NFL wanted to give Brady the deal that Tampa was going to give him. So he basically had no other choice. Well, he had the Giants. Bears. He had the Bears and I think the Chargers, too. What? What do you want? That's what happened. I think he would have been better, with the, the Bears. I think the been better on the Bears or the Chargers than with, the, with Tampa. You th I you think, think the rumblings that Dallas was a little bit into, into yeah. that fold. And I mean, Dallas would have been interesting. Jerry Jones would put down a load of money on anybody. Oh, yeah. What, what, honestly, you know, from Sunday, that, that awful injury from Dallas. Yeah. Well, no, I, was, I was watching the game, and then I like had to – do some like chores around the house and then i came back i'm like what's andy dalton doing in here <laughs> just and then imagine being a cowboys fan and now yeah. having having a deal with andy dalton as your quarterback now <laughs> like, oh boy well i mean uh, to be fair it isn't oh, don't even no he's not i'm not saying i'm not saying he's good i'm not saying he's good it's but it, the drop off the drop off is uh i mean doc uh, he was i didn't know Dak prescott was <laughs> late no no it was a hey, i'm controlling it all here Norcam controls it all. Uh, no, but what was it? Dak Prescott, I didn't even know. It. He was leading the league in like yardage, too. He was uh, a headed leprechaun. <laughs> well, no, but I will. I mean, you have to admit that Andy, uh, like it's a step. I mean, look at our backup situation. Would you rather have Andy Dalton than Brian Hoyer? No. Oh, <laughs> shut up. That is the worst load. I mean, after what That's we the saw, worst. I mean, I yeah, okay. would rather Andy Dalton. I, I mean, mean, I think An Andy, Andy Dalton was. is literally a younger version of Brian Hoyer. I, mean, oh, I don't know about that. I don't no, know. He's the leprechaun version of Brian Hoyer. I think. <laughs> well, you're also listen. Let's and let's also talk about where he was the last couple of uh, his Kringle. career. He was well. He was that. He got red. He used to have brown hair. Turned red because he played for the Cincinnati Bengals. So what happened? Yeah, was where he, he actually just, had some decent receivers in his like first couple of years. There no, and he and he now. and he did okay with it. They almost be, they almost beat the then I think uh, the powerful Steelers, but you know Von Berfick ruined that. Uh, no, they the I mean, listen, I would say I take Andy Dalton as a backup, but yeah, I don't think he's better than the Dak Prescott or anything like that. But I just think it's the drop the backup, off isn't yeah, as I crazy. That's okay. Yeah, I will say with it. But I, I, I you gotta admit backup, I'm providing that's... great uh, comedy right here. <laughs> loving, Me loving too. Dalton. I like to over exaggerate on certain things too. I mean, no, up. no, I, I, I do it's think. All that entertainment, it, folks. Phil, well, take you your stand up somewhere else. This isn't a comedy <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, no, but I think I don't know, man. It was just a weird scene on there. But he, uh, Dalton had a good showing though. He really did. He didn't lose the game. They won. Him. Yeah, they won. Did they and not? They got back. They did. Yeah. So I mean, wow. I'm for Dalton, let's see if he does it again. That foot, man. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll uh. see. Uh, I want to change the gears from the NFL. You know, we have obviously the Patriots again against Denver that Sunday afternoon. Tampa will have the uh, Packers later at night on Sunday. We, I, I personally would like to talk about how the playoffs have gone with baseball so far because it's still getting me very interested. I like their setting that they have in the bubble. They don't have to wait. The, the, you know, and the next day they 
play their next game. You don't have days off and anything. I am rooting for Tampa to represent the American League in the World Series. And then in the National League, I am rooting for the Braves. What? Whoa, wait, 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 not rooting wait, for the wait, 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 wait. Nope. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Roll back the tape three episodes ago and then continue. <laughs> I said I thought that. the Dodgers could win. <laughs> I thought. But mm. for some reason, the Dodgers are the lovable losers for some reason. Haven't won since 88. Bring out the gravy boat. <laughs> there's no way, there's no way I can see this Atlanta team allowing the Dodgers to come back from a 3-0, a 3-1 deficit right now. What is it? Because they, I mean, the Dodgers, they've been here, they're perennial, um, you know. I think uh, Dave NLCS. Roberts is going to get fired, to tell you the truth. I think that's what's going to happen. Well, I mean, listen, it's Dad, a lot. I'm a Dave Roberts guy. I am. Yeah, it sucks because they, they made the World Series the last two out of three, or was it just the last year? I think the last three out of three. Let's wow, think really? about it. Last year, no. No, no not last Washington year. Washington was the Nationals. last year. Yeah. Washington was last year. And it was the year 2018 before. was Red Sox, Dodgers. 2017 was Houston, oh, that was, Dodgers. Yep. 2016, they got to the championship series. Oh, okay. Who was 2016? Uh, I don't know. Cause Cubs, that's what, Cubs Indians. Oh, Cubs, Cubs Indians. Indians. Oh, wow. Was it really that? Yeah. That yeah. feels like forever ago. Yeah, it does. Right? Doesn't it? it does. I remember, well, yeah, another bar watching that. I think it's pretty disgraceful that you have – it's it's kind of like – The Dodgers and the Red crazy. Sox are kind of similar. So I got to choose my words carefully because they have Uh-oh. high payrolls. They have a lot of players who have similar kind of uh, contracts <laughs> and, okay. and all, you know – but pitching has been the Dodgers' biggest Achilles heel. Clayton Kershaw is got to be one of the worst, worse than David Price, worse than mm-hmm. Price, and that's shocking. But Clayton Kershaw just cannot get it done in, in the postseason. That's he got he got obliviated last night again. Yeah. And it's sad because there's a guy who has such good numbers, regular season and all. I mean, one of the best pitchers that this generation has probably seen. But he can't translate that into a postseason setting, which is sad because this is going to be 32 years now that the Dodgers have not won a championship. And for a team that's invested and trying to win every year, as a Red Sox fan, you kind of have a, you know, a sense of heart for them because the Red Sox went through 86 years. So we kind of know what the Dodgers fans are dealing with. Um, but part of me is also saying Mookie just got traded. Why do I want to see Mookie get traded and then go win another championship right after that? That that's my side yeah, on the yeah. take. I mean, I like Mookie, and I kind of was hoping for them. And I, I, you know, I was out there in LA for a time. I saw a couple of Dodgers games. I like Joe Kelly. Joe, who doesn't like I like, Joe, I like Joe Kelly. I like uh, I like Roberts. I, I like uh, what was it? The redheaded fella. Uh, is he still Justin the third Turner. baseman? Justin Turner. Turner. I like yep. Turner. I like their. I think it's their third year outfielder. Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. Bellinger. Like Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. I like, most of the team I Max like. Muncy's very good. Yeah, they have yeah. a – oh, the closer? What's the clo- – is that Muncy? Uh, closer is uh, Jensen. Jensen. I like him. But I like – I mean, I. it's a fun team to watch. And I, the big blue, I enjoy. So, I mean, it's not a bad – it's not bad for baseball for them to win. But um, – I don't know. Yeah, it sucks. I actually wish it was uh, either uh, Padres or L.A. Um, in the World Series. I wanted the Padres. I wanted the yeah. Padres, and that's shocking because they have yeah. um, that jerk, Manny Machado, on their team. Oh, yeah. But he actually has kind of turned his act around a little bit. He's made it so it's 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 rootable. You can root for yeah. him and everything. But, then, but I was surprised that the Padres didn't get to uh, the promised land. I was they, very surprised. They got swept, that. right? They I think they won one game. Yeah, oh, okay. one game. yeah, but that was in that ALDS. It was only the best of five. Yeah. I will say out of all the teams right now, the most impressive team that I've seen is the Braves. Uh, the Braves beating a team. I, I know game three, it was like 15 to something. You know, that was just crazy mm-hmm. how the Dodgers won that one game and all. But they have a player, a particular player, that I would want on the Red Sox to try their hardest to get this offseason, and that's Marcelo Suna. He's a fun player to watch. And I think that he's somebody that could help this Red Sox team for next year and years to come. Got a big he, bat. He's got a big bat. He's very good from there. Um, 
I also like Tampa. I mean, Tampa, look at the – it's a, incredible how they manage. I was watching the game last night, and all these different shifts and positioning that they do, they had George Springer up to the plate for the Astros, and they're playing four outfielders. Hmm. They moved their first baseman over to, like, second and first area, and they kept the left side at normal depth. But they have all this different strategy that they use. They, they're the team that – comes with up with these openers. So maybe somebody guy in the bullpen starts to, you know, starts the game and then somebody else, you know, jumps in from that. That's one thing I don't particularly love, but it's worked for them. I wish other teams, especially big market teams didn't implement that because I think it cheapens your product. The Rays don't have a choice. They don't have the money. They don't have mm. the resources available to be a hundred million dollar payroll team. So it's cool to see, how these small market teams line up against the big market teams. And when the big market teams can't win against these lower level people, it's very funny. It's very funny because it says, look what 20 million buys, look what 300 million buys a disgraceful product and you lose. So that's why I think like looking at the Astros here, the Astros have a big payroll. They got, you know, your Altuve's, your Bregman's, your George Springer's, your Grinkies, your Verlanders. I know Ver Verlanders hurt, but they have much more bigger names and known commodities. Tampa, I don't think many people know certain players on Tampa. So it's, it's a nice surprise to see this team fighting and have a lot of energy and have a lot of, you know, pride in playing the game in a way in a different kind of way. So I've enjoyed watching Tampa from afar. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to whoever shows up in the World Series, and it just. I think the Braves uh, are going to get this. I think the yeah, Braves. I the Braves the championships. Yeah. I think the Braves will get the championship, but we'll have to see. Um, more of those. Both of those series will continue. It's now three-two, uh, and Tampa in the American League Championship Series, mm -hmm. and it is three-one Braves. So the Dodgers need to win to continue. And then, of course, uh, Houston needs to tie it up, and that could possibly happen tonight, but we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll go to Phil first. We'll ask about the lovely uh, basketball championship here for the Lakers. So is this number four now for LeBron? This, this is, is going LeBron. to be quite a debate now between uh, all of us here. Uh, well, I mean, I don't, there's LeBron. nothing to debate. He's won four. That's true. Um, like, as far as, like, the number of championships, yeah, he won uh, two with Miami. Yeah, uh, one with Cleveland, and he's won one with uh, LA. So I don't know if he's the first to win with three teams. I think it was a battle between or a race between him and Kawhi. Yep. Uh, to do that, uh, I think no, actually, you know what? I think Robert Horry won with three. Actually, that's true because Robert Horry has won with uh, Houston, the Lakers, and San Antonio, I believe. Right. So, but it's still kind of a cool, and I think Robert Horry has either the most or second most uh, next to. Um, Bill Russell, but uh, oh, Phil, I, I, I want or there. I want to ask you a question. Okay, I want to ask you a statement. I want to ask. I'm going to say, I think everybody knows my take with LeBron. I am never have been, never will be. Can't really stand LeBron. So how can you, as a basketball fan, convince me to put LeBron up into a respectable kind of category? where I should absolutely be rooting for him no matter what and saying how no, awesome you don't, he is. Listen, you, you don't have to like the guy. That's right. always what I have to say. No, and that's uh, – you can like what he does off-court charity-wise and all that stuff as a human being, and, and you can also find stuff that he, he does you don't care for in that, in that right. uh, avenue, on that aspect, in that aspect of his life. But you know what? You can't debate that he isn't one of the best basketball players of the last – uh, 25, maybe in 50 years, or maybe ever to play the game. He's won four championships. He's been like, if you want to do a Brady comparison, he's been to almost like the percentage of him being in the finals, you know, the equivalent of he's the Super there. Bowl. Yeah. He's there almost, you he's know, the percentages like most of his career, he's been in the finals. And he's brought teams that had no uh, reason to be in the finals, uh, like all his years in Cleveland, even without the big three there. He brought Cleveland to the finals, I think, uh, maybe once or twice. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, he is, a, and he's a guy like this. Game six, it, and this wasn't wasn't a bad series. Like the Miami gave it a little bit, of, a bit of a push. 
winning those two games, and I kind of called it a little bit. I mean, I, I can't say call it because it was kind of clear as day. It looked like how it was going, like the Heat will win another game, you know, because L.A. has that leverage or has that, like, wiggle room to allow. And I say allow because, like, once they turn it up, I think L.A. can can do it. But I actually was shocked that I didn't go to seven because game five against the Lakers, uh, Miami really, like, hit them in the heart because uh, L.A. did their – damnedest at that point Miami got game. two wins correct they got two wins game five and game three yeah and uh game five I think was more a complete win because they looked like LA threw everything at them and it was a great game it was a great game and game six I didn't catch all of it but uh it was a defensive like shutdown uh by uh LA right and they did a fantastic job and it also like that's like a lot of people like you'll hear like you know like Felger and Maz and a lot of people who you know know basketball enough but don't really don't really appreciate what it is it's a team sport it, obviously it's a team sport but they say oh you need superstars sure but I mean with that logic then Le- LeBron should have like 50 should have a championship every year he's been in the league right. because it's one of those things where it's like you don't just need superstar or more than one superstar Anthony Davis you need a bunch of role players in there and uh, like Rajon Rondo was amazing in it uh Kuzma uh was really great Caruso Anthony Davis Anthony Davis I mean Anthony Davis was number t- I mean you could say at some points he was uh a first line yeah. uh he, he was number one because yeah. that's the thing it took the pressure off LeBron a bit but LeBron still had crazy games in there and the thing is he always is like line the lines I see Tom just kind of shaking and yeah um shaking his head and just kind of getting back in his chair but uh yeah no LeBron is up there he should be considered to be up there because when he's in you can see it too you can see him turn it on and just watch when he hits Jeff Van Gundy said it best one of my favorite announcing teams by the way in all of sports Jeff Van Gundy Mark Jackson and I forget the other guy the other guy's like the the straight man or the company guy and even then you can tell when the refereeing's real crap when he kind of is like eh but uh, they, Jeff Van Gundy said when LeBron hits those threes, and he, LeBron would just hit those threes effortlessly. He's not as smooth as a, a Curry or even like a Duncan Robinson or, you know, name whatever, you know, flavor of the month hits a, is your three-point sniper. But he can just drill shots in. And, like, when he goes to the basket, just hit him with a two-by-four. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Just, uh, I mean, you really have to clobber him. And even then, you know, who knows? He might power through it. But yeah, he's one of those guys. He's like a Michael Phelps in that regard, where he's his body is built as like a guard forward, a real like a bird type, like even more physically gifted than bird in that regard to like go to the basket. But I mean, on, I'm a bird guy as well. I'm actually more of a Reggie Lewis guy. But uh, if you were to compare the two, it'd be, be kind of crazy because bird in his day, in the day where people got clobbered, like he had like a 29, almost like 30 point average, and like. 13 rebounds a game. Uh, it's kind of crazy. They both they both are insane players in their at their height. But yeah, LeBron's up there, man. He's got four championships, three with uh, three of them with different teams. And I don't know. I think he's good for another couple of years, and maybe he wins another championship with LA. Or a buddy of mine texted me. He's like, "Oh, where do you think he's going to go next?" I didn't even think about that. I mean, maybe he does go to maybe he goes to Milwaukee and tries to get Giannis one, or maybe he goes, you know. Uh, I'd love to see him go to like a weird market. Like maybe he goes, uh, I don't know, maybe he goes to Minnesota and maybe it is like the LeBron tour. And I'd love to see that until like, he really doesn't have it. And I'm sure he, I don't know. I don't know when he'll quit. He's I think 34 or 35. I think he's 35. So I think maybe he's got a, like maybe three to four years, maybe two to three where he's really a threat. Um, yeah, I think I no. think after everything with Kobe Bryant from this year and everything, I think he's going to stay with the Lakers to finish yeah. off the rest of his career and win out as much as he can. I think that's why he went to the Lakers is he wanted to carry on the legacy and you know put the Lakers back on track. And I, I don't see him going to another team. I don't. Yeah. I, just, I, I think, think he'll just walk away after he's done I think, whatever contract he has. Yeah, I, you're probably right. It, it was just kind of a fun thing my friend brought up, and I didn't even think about. It's an but, interesting thought. I mean, because oh, he's yeah. traveled around to different places, Cleveland, Miami, Lakers. Yeah. I mean, he's been to different spots. So, so it I makes mean, sense. Yeah, no, I think, like, him being a journeyman would be kind of the fun, more fun thing for the NBA. But, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think, like, he, saw, he wanted to be part of that, like – because he wasn't part of a franchise that had kind of like that uh, that esteemed quality. And it, 
And let it be known, he, we tried to get him. The Celtics tried to nab him. They did. Uh, and, you know, maybe he comes to the seas or something. I don't know. But I don't know how that would uh, – take him getting used to from the – Yeah, I, yeah I guess. I mean, I would love if he in his, like, you know, 38 or his last year in the league just came to the seas and was a player off the bench or even just was one of the player coaches. Like we talked about I last probably week. would buy in. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I Like I said, you don't have to like the guy. And there are times when just, like, the NBA is full of people who do this. Like, that's kind of yeah, like I've their... never seen somebody flop so much in my life and just – Oh, yeah. I, I have a very hard time rooting him. I'm not taking away his, his ability and his skill yeah. and everything that he has brought to the game. I'm not taking that away. But you just, just don't think he has skill. Like, uh... I, can't, I can't support it. I can't. <laughs> He's I running can't. for office and you need to support him. Oh, hell, heck no on that. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I think, like I think, always, I I think it's happens. weird as we get older too, and maybe it's not just – maybe this is part of it too, when we get, you know – when you're a kid and you see like, because when I actually when I was a kid I didn't really care for Jordan as much, because I wanted to root against him, because he was a guy you know like someone like I, I say this a good amount, but when like someone outside of New England as a seat? as a kid, where's his car seat? It's in my car. It's in LeBron's car. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when um, what was it? When that happens? Oh God, now I lost it. You were um, talking. Well, so I mean. I oh, think sorry, everybody ahead, outside of Chicago was rooting, uh, trying yeah. to root against Jordan. I, yeah. I think, I mean, uh, you know, he was just one of those guys that he had to. But, I mean, Chicago was one of the greatest teams. That that era of Chicago, oh, yeah. the Chicago Bulls was one of the greatest teams. Um, but then you were talking about something about, like, people in New England or something. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, but, Tom, it's just the same thing as you grow up. And maybe if you, if you grow up and you see the superstar like LeBron and you're, you don't live in Cleveland or Miami or L.A., you really – it's like, oh, he's really amazing. You really want to see that happen. So, I mean, like, yeah, I, I think also as you get older, you get you get more weary of sometimes like these, making someone into the next big thing. Because we were old enough, I think, at least I was, I know, for when um, they made him into a big deal, which he was, but it also took time for him to really cement himself. But he, he came on quick, and he came on young as a kid. So, yeah. But I got I to gotta check something out. Give me one second. While Phil checks out everything right on that end, I would like to ask Tom his personal opinions on what the heck is going on with the Bruins this offseason. Just before we go into Tom's take here, I just personally want to say that as a Bruins fan, I am absolutely disgusted on what this team is doing right now. I'll let you take it over now. Yeah, I mean, the uh, not re-signing Tory Krug was kind of a big hit, but at the same time, um, I mean, the Bruins have a ton, a ton of young talent and down in Providence on the, for the blue line aspect of the team. Um, they signed, signed Chara again. I, I don't know why they keep bringing this guy, <laughs> bringing this guy back. Chara has been re-signed. I didn't hear that news. I think so. I haven't heard that news. When did that happen? I, I could have sworn I saw that uh, a few days ago. No. Chara has not been re-signed. Chara, there was actually a report here that said that Chara was exploring other options outside of the Bruins. Hmm. You didn't hear that, huh? No, Chara has not no. been re-signed. Nope. Nope. I'm seeing nothing on my feed from everything. So, from, so far, this is who the Bruins have signed. They are minor leaguers that will be two-way contracts, Providence and Bruins. They have signed Jacob Zaboro, Greg Mc. King, Greg McEgg or something, Caleb Booth. And then uh, the only other thing I heard so far about the Bruins for anything this week has been um, they did sign a new winger, Craig Smith. That looks yep. like they could pair him up on the second line or third. I'm not 100% sure. But if I was to do any – if I was to give any sort of grade on how this offseason would go, I'm giving him an out. They get it out. It's, it's I mean, I mean uh, Tony Krug, it was an integral part, most importantly, of that power play line. He did a great job, but if you lose him, you got to replace him. So my, my big thing here is if you, if you don't have him, you go back and you sign Kevin Miller. I mean, what is wrong with, with Don Sweeney and the organization? What is wrong with these people? 
Yeah, I mean, Ke- that's the best you can do. Kevin Miller, what a Kevin slap Miller. in the face of Bruins fans. Kevin Miller was a pretty dumb re-signing. Um, you may have hurt again. I mean, I'm sorry. But uh, I'm a big I'm a big fan of Craig Smith. Uh, he of was, course you are. He has the same last name as you. Of course you are. He was he was a key he was a key player on the uh, on the Predators. So I mean, you know, we'll go back we'll go back uh, to the episode where we talked about Charlie Coyle being signed. You know, <laughs> now you weren't ready for that one. Um, you know he's no, from. But I think I think Craig I think Craig Smith's going to be. Gonna, uh, I think he's. I don't know. I, I, I think he'd be good on the second line, but I also think he'd he'd do well on the third line too. Um, well, as I talked about on that last show, I mean, this is it. You got Krejci's thirty-four, Bergeron's thirty-five, Chara's a million. You got Marshawn's these, thirty, thirty something. You got all these all these 36. players whose their window is closing. I personally think the window closed after what just happened this off this uh this playoff. I really do, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You know, they've. I mean, so the way I see it is, I mean, Crew, yeah, he helps out on the power play, but how much did he actually do this past season, whether it was during the COVID season or during when they were actually having a regular season? That's fine. My point here, I'm trying to say, is if Krug is gone, he's one of your, he was one of your very successful defensemen for, pretty, for a long time. Who's taking his spot? Because the Bruins are telling me right now as a fan, oh, don't worry. We're going to put Kevin Miller into his spot and everything's going to be okay. Well, I just want to stick my finger right up where Don Sweeney <laughs> is and tell him how I feel on that move. I think um, I think Connor Clifton would be a good fit. I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's not – I wouldn't say he's as quick as Krug, but I definitely think he's been developing into a, into a two-way defenseman. Have the Bruins become an organization where free agents and other players just don't want to come to Boston to play now? I mean, who, if you think about it, who do they really have? You know, in, you know, the Rangers have uh, the Rangers have Panarin, the Sabres have Eichel, and now they have Taylor Hall. Um, you got McDavid and Drysaitel and Edmonton. I mean, we don't really have that. I mean, we have Pasternak, but, like, he's not that, you know, that – I wouldn't put him really in the top tier Do of we players. overrate Brad Marshan? Do I overrate Brad? Do we I mean, as fans? Um, no, I think – I think every – any – um, any group of fans would rate him the same as we do, it, you know, if they were – if he was on their team, you know. Same question goes for Bergeron. Do we overrate Bergeron? No. So Bergeron, it, it, he is who he is. He's somebody that you you should be putting all your you know your pennies into to make. Oh, him absolutely. I mean, okay. all, all all analysts, every NHL analyst says the same thing. Is is I mean, we have one of the best top lines, but if we didn't have Bergeron, we wouldn't have that best line. But does that matter at the end of the day? What we've seen from the top line is, yeah, they're wonderful and all, but we've seen them break down. We've seen them get hurt. They're getting older. You don't balance that out well in your second or your third line. I personally think the Bruins' biggest flaw, this whole postseason ride and everything, had to do with not much production on that. Outside of Krejci, your second line was not acceptable. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so you I have mean, to figure out ways of getting it. They they were in the running for Taylor Hall, and he decided no, he wasn't going to go there. So that was why my point came across as is Boston becoming a place where p- players do not want to come, I, or is our GM just a cheap son of a gun? Um, could be ownership too. I mean, we have we have. T- the Jacobs brothers who are as cheap as a dollar. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it comes from ownership. Um, Cause they're not cause showing that we, they want, they want to go out and spend to get better. They're, we could, we could get, I mean, we could have a lot. More. I, I think, I think part of the reason why teams don't want to come here. I mean, I don't know why Taylor Hall wanted to go to Buffalo, but um, I think teams don't want to come here because, you know, we won back in 2011, but, 
what have we really done since then? I mean, 2013, we were in the Stanley Cup. 2019, we should have won. But these opportunities that got completely thrown away, basically, you may never get back to that stage again. So right. that's why, to me, it's almost like, yeah, we've got, we got one championship, but was that really because of a Bergeron? Was that really because of a Martian? I don't well, think I mean, back to, I mean, I think that was all to Tim Thomas. I mean, he, he helped, but, I mean, you got you had Marshawn, Sagan, and Bergeron on that top line, and they, they produced. So I mean, Sagan, Sagan had a couple – It's Sagan, the curse of Tyler Sagan. Probably. I mean, Sagan had a couple key goals that helped them get to the, win the cup. Yeah, I agree. After they benched him, and then they put him back, oh, yeah, he can actually score. I mean, I don't know. Everybody, you know, if you if you think about it, I mean, who knows? Maybe it was Nathan Horton that really was the re reason Could've why. Could have been. been. I mean, but my he, point here on this whole thing is, I I like the, as an as a sports organization the most here right now in our city in Boston. I like the Bruins the most. So that's why for me to see them half ass this off season when they have the players there when they were at a certain stage. And now you want to regress and not put all the attention and the money and the pride into your team. That doesn't sit well with me. You also have that unknown of what they're going to do with Tuka Rask. So there's a lot of questions that need to be asked this offseason. I've seen absolutely nothing done from Don Sweeney. So I don't have any confidence in him until there's a move that's made that shows me that this team is invested and willing and going to make every ounce of effort they can to win another cup. You can't yeah. just set up a one. I'm sorry. Bergeron is too much of a talent. Same with Marshan. Same with Krejci. They're too talented to only have one cup on their resume. They got to get that second one. Yeah. They can't I blow mean, the opportunity anymore. They just blow an opportunity. So that's my stance on, on, on all of that. So I know that we're um, coming up on the uh, closing end here on our show. Um, I just wanted to say to you guys, any final statements that anybody would like to make on everything that we talked about here today? Uh, I think it's clear uh, that Nick loves, uh, let's just say it, Nick loves LeBron James and he I loves- do. Yep. Uh, I do, I heart LeBron, Mahomes. I heart him. PM, as he calls him. He's like, hey, it's time for PM. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> right. You can say his full name, Nick's like, nope. He's cool as a cucumber. I love it. I, I know what his middle name is, but we just won't we won't say that on the show. We're family friendly, so no, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Nice crowd here, so oh, you can use your own imagination. With I mean, it. I am. I'm trying. I just it's oh, not oh. coming. There's there's a lot of things that come to mind when you think of middle names for LeBron coming from Nick. So yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, oh, champion. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, I, um. MVP. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. Did I say that? I, I think I had a little tickle in my throat. Yeah. Excuse me, fraud. Um, anyways, I want to thank everybody for joining us here on, on Face the Facts. Uh, we don't have really, unless any of you guys have any other uh, things that you wanted to talk about that was anything unrelated to sports. I know we covered a lot here on our show. Um, we will see you again next time for another lovely episode where we will talk about hopefully a Patriots win have more clarity on who the champion is of the American League and National League for baseball. And hopefully Don Sweeney does something. Hopefully a big move for the Bruins. So um, for Nick Face, Bill Haley. Bill, um, sorry. I don't, sorry. I don't know what you're listening to. I was going to say for Nick Face, and then you say for oh, Bill I see. Haley. For Nick Face, messed it up again. Sorry. <laughs> Bill Haley. And, um, and Tom Smith, uh, we will see you again next time on another virtual episode of Face the Facts. See you later.